wait a couple of minutes to make sure that this is streaming correctly. And I think it is started. I think so. Well, we have a few special guests at today's live video. And Nurse Kitty has them. Here they are, the little babies. The chicken nuggets. Look at their little tails. Oh, dear stop it. So it's been pretty busy here lately, um, which is exciting. And that has meant that our team has grown again. And I would really like to introduce you to our two latest staff members. Um, we have Dr. Nicole over Hello. here. She's our new vet who is working three days a week and every other Saturday. So if you happen to be in the clinic on Wednesdays, Thursdays, or Fridays, um, you may meet Dr. Nicole. Um, and I'll get her to tell us a little bit about herself in a moment, which I hadn't told her I was going to do. <laughs> Surprise! And we have Nurse Charlotte. Hi. She's um, joined our team from Rose Bay Vet Clinic, and um, she's now moved to the area. So we're loving having Nurse Charlotte here. So you may have met her during um, a nurse appointment or during your patient's admit or discharge. Hey Emma. Hi, Emma, we miss you. <laughs> we so miss you. <laughs> so Emma's just joined us. She's um, at home on maternity leave with her beautiful babies. So um, we can't wait to have Emma back in the clinic. But for now, she needs to be home. Um, so, Dr. Nicole, tell us a bit about yourself. Hello. Um, I am just back from maternity leave. Actually, decided to come join the <laughs> family vets after my maternity leave. Um, so I am originally from the States. I graduated from veterinary school there back in 2010. And I've been practicing in Australia, um, well, pretty much since then. So about nine and a half years I've been practicing in Australia now. So I've been here for quite a while. And I think that's about... <laughs> <laughs> do you have any that's areas... Kind of stuff. Do you have any special interest areas, Nicole? Oh, yes. Um, I am... Ago. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're much better vets than we are in this Facebook Live business, okay? Um, I'm quite interested in dental um, procedures and dentistry, um, so I'm quite passionate about dental health. If you come in, you'll hear me talk a lot about teeth. Um, and <laughs> uh, what else? I'm also quite passionate about aged pet care and making sure that aged pets especially are happy and comfortable. I find a lot of them... Um, tend to get a bit stiff and sore but don't really say much so if we can identify that and help them out that's always really big as well Awesome, so as you can tell Nicole's an excellent fit to our <laughs> clinic um, now, now Charlotte, she's very nervous but <laughs> normally in the clinic you can't stop her from talking <laughs> but it's just like being in the clinic Charlotte <laughs> tell us a bit about yourself <laughs> Hi I'm Charlotte. I'm originally from the UK. I immigrated to Australia five years ago. Um, I've been a veterinary nurse for the past 10 and a bit years and I qualified with the Royal College of Veterinary Surgeons in 2015. Um, I really enjoy surgical nursing and I have a special place for small pocket pets. So the <laughs> rabbits, guinea pigs, Ferrets, <laughs> <laughs> even the <laughs> crypt orchid ones. Exactly. <laughs> um, and I also love doing nurse clinics and getting to know you guys and your pets. Yeah. Perfect. <laughs> no, we've loved having Charlotte here, um, particularly for those pocket pets. She's been um, an absolute angel at helping me with all my... I've been doing a lot of exotic animals lately, so... I've had some, I've had a guinea pig. I've had that crocodile ferret. Mm -hmm. So yeah, bunnies, blue tongue, uh, blue lizards. tongue lizards, <laughs> oh, so many kookaburras, kookaburras. <laughs> yep. Um, so we're seeing quite a quite a lot of different patients at the moment, and it's very handy to have a nurse who's uh, quite keen to step up and do those anaesthetics, which can be a bit more tricky than just a regular dog or cat anaesthetic. Mm -hmm. Um, so, we had a few questions come into the clinic. I don't know where to put this. Where's the best spot? <laughs> Push back. We need to okay. like, we all need to like, cuddle. It's not very we work together. Okay. We wanted to let you know to look out for our newsletter that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. Um, 
We are going to have some patient stories in the newsletter, a couple of updates on our preventatives and some special offers for you as well. Um, and just, you know, common spring information in there for you as well to help keep your pets healthy. Um, what the first question we got was what our opinion on raw feeding is. Controversial topic. <laughs> controversial. It is quite controversial. We don't even all agree here. So, um, I don't know. Do you want to start off, Nicole, and tell us what you think? Look, I would say to remember there are pros and cons to any way that you choose to feed your pet. Um, just being mindful that it is very hard to get a nutritionally complete raw diet. Even a lot of the store-bought ones might not be nutritionally complete. And I think to the best of my knowledge, there aren't any right now that actually meet all of the guidelines set forth by the WSAVA um, for nutrition guidelines. So it's a bit hard to say. A lot of them are very good, but there are some um, that might not have the best quality control or might not be using the best quality ingredients for your pets. So just some things to be mindful of. Yeah, absolutely. So I suppose for myself, I I don't feed my dogs raw, um, partly because I don't have the time to properly prepare that kind of meal, um, and I don't want raw meat hanging around the house. Um, I've got young kids, so I think if I was feeding them raw, there's just an increased risk um, to my family of us picking up things like salmonella um, and things like that. So that's one of the reasons I don't do it, but saying that, I know some clients who feed their pets raw and their animals are nice and healthy, um, but I always like to say, you know, make sure that you want it to be a balanced diet, so if you are doing it, we can give you the details of nutritional, uh, like nutritionist advice so that you can get it to be a, as balanced as possible, so there's a couple of different services there that we can um, send, you, send you in the right direction to make sure that it is a balanced diet. Um, and look, I do caution it, particularly with young puppies and young kittens. Um, they're the ones that are much more prone to getting a bit of gastro if, um, if they've fed those kind of diets. So um, yes, I always say, you know, these are the risks, and then I leave the decision up to you guys. Ooh, Nurse Kitty wants to chime in. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to input that on top of what they all said, it's important to remember that um, the raw feeding changes with their life stages and it's always changing, especially like, and you, you don't really know what they need throughout that stage. So if you are going to do it, just make sure you let us, you let us know. We will help you. Okay. And now I'm going to throw Nurse Charlotte right in it. <laughs> She's a raw feeder. Yes. They walk past us. <laughs> we are around. <laughs> um... So I have one cat and one dog, and they are fed predominantly a raw diet. I do try to res responsibly source the raw food, so I do buy commercially already made raw diets, so Bath and there's also like the kangaroo mints and stuff in Pet Barn, we've added bits and bobs in it to make sure they're getting the right vitamins and minerals that they need. Um, in saying that, with the dog, I, I also do sometimes try to feed her a properly manufactured pet food. So she does sometimes get the Hills um, mature dog wet food. Um, and and the cat, some, he sometimes gets the CV stress wet food because he does have urinary issues. So I think that is important, if especially if they are there is a medical condition there, then you should be looking to to feed a diet that is more veterinary, you know, recommended. Um, so they do get it mixed up a little bit, but predominantly their diet is raw. I'm a big believer in taking it back to na the na their natural, <laughs> their natural ways, and so yeah. yeah it's, and I think with raw food diets, there's a couple of things that I say to look out for. Mm -hmm. I was like, make sure that the meat smells fresh enough that you'll yeah. cook it for yourself to eat. Yeah. If it smells funky, don't give it to mm -hmm. them. If you've got some funky smelling chicken in the fridge, don't give it to the dog. Yeah. If you're not yeah. going to cook it to eat it, chuck don't, it out. Yeah. Um, don't leave it out in the sun. If they're not yeah. going to eat it straight away, then it's, they're probably never going to eat yeah. it straight away. Um, they're probably better off with something a bit safer, a commercial kibble or wet food. 
Um, and again, if you've got young children, you're probably not going to want to leave that down in the kitchen for them to grab hold of and and stuff. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, and I guess the other thing is keeping them up to date with worming mm -hmm. is really important if they're um, on raw food, um, because we don't like, we know that things like high data tapeworm, tapeworm they can get that through eating raw meat. So um, to be mindful of making sure they're up to date with worming. So, and a tip if you're going to feed raw meat, freeze it first mm -hmm. and defrost it and feed it, because then when you feed it, uh, sorry, freeze it. <laughs> you are likely to kill more of the bad bacteria and parasites that may be within the meat. Thank you. There you go. If you've got raw feeding questions, <laughs> we'll take it to Now, my um, list of questions went forward. Okay. Ooh. What do we recommend for settling in a new puppy in, or kitten into the home? Adaptil. Mm, yes. <laughs> yes. Pheromones. Okay. Synthetic pheromones. <laughs> um, a little bit goes a long way. Yeah. Crate training for puppies. Huge advocate for crate training. Um, if you're not using it for punishment, it is not mean. It becomes their little safe, happy den. So um, it takes a little time to get used to it, but they will grow to love it. Mm. And that benefits them in the future. That's right. If they need to go to kennels or have all the vet clinic, <laughs> yeah. they'll happily sit in a crate. <laughs> Think of it as an insurance policy <laughs> yeah. um, for later on in case they do need to go to kennels or to the vet because a lot of times you don't anticipate those types of things but they might pop up. And carrier training for kittens, a huge advocate for that. Get them used to going in and out of the carrier and make it so the carrier isn't a big scary thing that they only see um, when they're going to end up at the vet or doing something they don't like. Okay. And yet we supply all this information to you during um, your pet's puppy or kitten vaccination or health check. Um, and we certainly can help you personalise, you know, what's going to work best for your family and your pet. But yeah, crate training, oh my gosh, it changed my life. My, my two current dogs are both crate trained and it's incredible. It is definitely their safe spot. One time I house sat for Belinda <laughs> and I said, okay boys, in your bed. But they... They ran. They ran into their crates. Oh, I don't have crate trained dogs and I wish I did, but oh my goodness, it was great. It was great. They just knew exactly where to go and they just took themselves straight there and hopped in on their beds. So good. Mel, is it Mel? Yeah, Mel. Her comment is actually very true as well, especially with up here know. out in the bush and stuff. You want to get out quick for any reason. You good want a job, dog Mel. or a cat that goes straight into a crate. That's, that's, that's a good right. point, Mel. Yeah, very good point. Especially with you know bushfire season probably starting yes. to come back. Hopefully not too yeah. soon. Speaking of seasons, speaking of seasons, <laughs> oh, what a great segue into <laughs> the newsletter. Is that I think I think it was a segue into the newsletter. <laughs> I'm just sitting here prompting everything. <laughs> I'm just behind the scenes. He's our teleprompter. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. And, oh, yeah, well, <laughs> well, you can't spring. Yeah. So spring, um, we have actually seen our first um, grass seed for the season. So, um, what's that? That was Tuesday. Tuesday. Um, we removed our grass seed from Lucas Foot. So, um, and it's kitten season, I think. Yep, we're coming yeah. in. Yeah, starting kitten season is starting. So, yep. um, be on the lookout for kittens about as well. Um, the next question that was settling in for and kittens is. What do we do to help with anxious animals coming to the vet? So, pheromones. Pheromones, we, um, you'll... <laughs> I was like, oh, can you see the baby? I'm trying to... It's so cute when their little whiskers and their ears go when they're sucking. It's so, adorable. If you head across to our Instagram page or uh, on our Facebook story, you'll see a nice video of me crying. <laughs> <laughs> crying. <laughs> <laughs> this kitten was too cute to handle. Otherwise, it's <laughs> just too much. Anyway, go on, um, sorry. So that's where I guess carrier training comes in really handy for cats. So um, often preparing them for the vet visit starts at home. So if they're stressed before they even leave because you've had to chase them around the house and then get them out from under the bed and then put them in a carry box, you know, if you've got your cat already carrier trained and is quite comfortable and happy to be in the carry box, that's already going to make the visit to the vet um, a lot easier. Um, so we use pheromones as well, so we use fell away for cats and adaptal for dogs. So our um, dog patients get an adaptal bandana and our um, cat patients, we have a blanket that's sprayed with fell away in the room, we have adaptal and fell away 
um, diffusers getting pumped out in all the consult rooms. Um, we also, I guess the other things we do here is we don't have the patients all hang around waiting in the waiting room and getting really stressed out and stressing each other out and barking and carrying on. Um, so when you get here, we ask you to call us and then you go straight to a consult room and get a chance to settle in. Okay, so you're not having that big adrenaline surge when you see other when they see other pets. Mm -hmm. um, and the other thing we would do would be sometimes we use medication for really anxious pets. Um, my own dogs, even though they live with the vet, when they come to the vet and I have to do stuff with them, <laughs> and I am their vet, despite being their mother, I still have to give them medication. They need situational anxiety medication to come to the vet. So um, there's plenty of different things that we can do to tailor, um, tailor the visits to your pet. The other thing we do is happy visits. Mm -hmm. and yeah. Yeah, they're really valuable. So we're trying to build up the bank of good experiences. So it's not just all injections and temperature checks. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah. So they're having fun, a chance to have fun when they come to the vet instead of feeling like they're just getting picked on every Lots time. Of treats, models, Lots of treats, models, right. toys. <laughs> yep, yep, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> so um, all of our um, happy visits with the nurses, there's no charge for that. So if you want to have a happy visit in the clinic, just um, give us a call and um, book it in with one of our nurses. And they'll, if you've got a dog um, that's a bit reactive to other dogs, they can try and organize that at a time when the, cli when the clinic's a bit quieter as well. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Well, anyone else want to talk about anything? Are we good? Yeah. Check there's no questions. Da, da, da. Looks good to me. Okay. Well, we better get back to afternoon consults.